Hello everyone and welcome back to part 4 of my Keyforge set review. In today's video we'll be looking at Mars and all of the cards that are in the Mars house. So let's start with a big one, Ammonia Clouds. It's an action, it has the play ability, deal 3 damage to each creature. This is just some big old fashioned board clear. It's great, it's very thematic, you know the evil aliens come in, land and kill and everything. Um, yeah, common, good, it's board removal, it's probably going to kill your stuff. So just play it on, you know, a field where they've got loads of things out. Battle Fleet is next. It is an action. It is the player ability. Reveal any number of Mars cards from your hand. For each card revealed this way, draw one card. And it gives you one amber when you play it. Um, this is useful. There's a lot of reliance on having a bunch of Mars cards in the Mars house. Um, this You don't have to play the other cards, so you can just show them. Um, I believe with multiples of this, I imagine you can reveal the same cards. Um, very useful. This could obviously, you could, you know, you could draw into another one, then play it again, and draw into, you know, there's a lot of combo potential with this. Very good. Deep Probe is next. It is an action. It gives you one amber when you play it, and it has the playability. Choose a house. Reveal your opponent's hand. Discard each creature of that house revealed this way. So this could totally take someone's whole hand. Um... It could do nothing, it could whiff, but you know, you're gonna guess one of the three houses in their deck because they you have to, you know, by the nature of the game, know what the opponent has because you see their Archon. Um Yeah, this could potentially do quite a lot. You get an arm before it anyway, so it's very useful. If you have two of these, you're guaranteed to wipe out a lot of stuff because once you've done it the first time you know what they've got. Um Yeah. Good card, get an amber for playing it anyway, potentially could take out a bunch of their stuff, very nice. EMP Blast is next, it is an action, it gives you one amber when you play it, and it has the play ability, each Mars creature and each robot creature is stunned, each artifact creature, we <laughs> keep doing that, each artifact is destroyed. This is useful if your opponent has a lot of artifacts, it is not useful when you have tons of Mars creatures on the field. If you have no Mars creatures on the field and they have a bunch out, this is great. If they have a bunch of artifacts out and you don't, this is great. If they have more than you and you're willing to get rid of a couple of your things to get rid of all of their things, this is great. Um, obviously, bear in mind the fact that it will stun your things. So, yeah, use it sensibly. But it's a good card for getting rid of artifact heavy decks. Hypnotic Command is next. It is an action. It's the playability. For each friendly Mars creature, choose an enemy creature to capture one amber from their own side. Um, there's a lot to this. Uh, for a rare, this doesn't seem that powerful. Um, you have to, there's a lot of setup involved in this card. So you have to have first of all, you have to have a bunch of Mars things out. Then they have to have a bunch of enemy creatures out, and they have to have a bunch of amber out. It, it, sorry, they have to have collected a bunch of amber. Um, Obviously, in the ideal situation, you'll have loads of Mars creatures out, they'll have loads of creatures out, and they'll have loads of Amber, and you can take it all. But I can't see this. There's a lot of setup to this. Um, it doesn't feel like a rare. It feels more like an uncommon ability. Um, I don't actually like this card. Yeah, I'm, I don't think it's a very good card. Irradiated Ember is next. It gives you one Amber when you play it, and it has the action ability... Oh, sorry, it's an action card and it has the play ability. If your opponent has six amber or more, deal three damage to each enemy creature. This feels more like a rare. Um, you get the one for playing it, and when they're about to make a key, then you get to wipe out a lot of their stuff. Yeah, very, it's very good. It will always be relevant. Um, or it will always have you know a chance to be very relevant, whatever game you're playing. Um, I like this card. Key of Production is next, it's an action, it gives you one amber when you play it, and it has the playability, return each Mars creature to its owner's hand, then you may forge a key at plus nine of the current cost, retouched by one amber for each card in your hand. There's a lot of mental maths with this card, basically you want to play this when you have a bunch of Mars things out, um, and then you get to make a key, and it'll probably still be, even if you have a lot of Mars things out, it'll still be quite an expensive key. But you get to make one there and then. Um, this is really good if you've got a bunch of Mars things and or a bunch of um, Amber. Um, if you don't have many Mars things out, you can then be crafting a key at like, I don't know, 14 Amber cost and you won't have that many. But 
you chance are you'll have a few things out, you'll have a few amber saved up, and then you can just make an amber on the fly. Um, if you have a, you know, you could have a really good turn and make two keys in one turn. It could be really good. The ability to make a key out of nowhere is very powerful, by the way. Martian Hounds is next. It's an action, and it has the play ability: choose a creature, each damaged creature, give the chosen creature plus two power counters. Um, there's a lot of Mars cards that deal mass damage to mass creatures, so you can distribute a lot of damage amongst a load of things. This is kind of like um, sort of cashing in on them damaged creatures to buff one of your things. Uh, this could be very strong. Um, yeah, there's a bit of setup for it, but it could ma make one of your things massive, uh, make it a real pain for the opponent to deal with. Now this does feel like a rare. I like I like this. Martians make bad allies is next. It is an action and it has the playability. Reveal your hand, purge each revealed non Mars creature, and gain plus one amber for each card purged this way. So if you've got a bunch of things that aren't very useful, or you just need that extra bit of amber to make a key. You get rid of all your things from another house and yeah, get a bunch of amber. Uh, it's quite useful. Um, you want to play it when you've got a really poor hand. That then filters that, that hand out of your deck, which then makes the rest of your deck stronger. And it gives you amber for it, so it's quite good. Um, yeah, it's, this is a good rare. It's deceptive. It doesn't seem very good at first because there's a lot of... You have to get rid of your own things. But then you do it with a bad hand, and then suddenly the rest of your deck is a is a better quality, um, it, which improves the consistency of your deck, which improves your chance of winning. Good card. Mass Abduction is next. It's the flavorest card in the deck. Um, it gives you one amber when you play it. It is an action, and it has the playability. You put up to three damaged enemy creatures into your archives. If any of these creatures leave your archives, they are put into their owner's hand instead. Basically, you want to play this on your opponent's damaged things, take them away, and don't touch them. <laughs> simply put either that or you use it on your damaged things oh no 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 ignore that yeah just take away their things and leave them there don't even play them done simple mating season is next it's an action it gives you one amber when you play it and it's the playability shuffle each mars creature into its owner's deck each player gains one amber for each creature shuffled into their deck this way so if you're the only one playing Mars, this is great. If they're playing Mars, this is double-sided, so they could get a lot of benefit. Um, there's a big reliance on playing a lot of Mars creatures or having a lot of Mars creatures in this deck. So you play them all, play this, they go back into your deck, and you get to use the combo again later, and you get a big payout for it. Um, yeah, this, this is good. Mothership support is next, is an action. It gives you an amber when you play it, and it has the playability for each friendly ready Mars creature, deal two damage to a creature. You may choose a different creature each time. So you play a bunch of Mars things, you have two or three creatures out, you play this, and you get to distribute a lot of damage amongst your enemy creatures. Um, yeah, this is this is part of the deck, is playing a lot of Mars stuff. Um, strength in numbers sort of um, is like the theme of the deck. And we're going to see that in another couple of cards. The next one is another example of it. It's called Orbital Bombardment. This is an action. It gives you one amber when you play it. And similar to before, it has the, uh, the play ability. Reveal any number of Mars cards from your hand. For each card revealed this way, deal two damage to a creature. So similar to Mothership Support, you show off all the Mars cards in your hand. You deal a bunch of damage to them. You then play all your Mars creatures. Then you play Mothership Support and you just totally wipe out all of their things. Uh, if you get that combo to go off in a game, you're going to probably be in a really good position to win. Next is Phosphorus Stars. It is an action, and it has the playability, stun each non-Mars creature, gain two chains. Yep, if you've got a big board state, you play this, you stun all their stuff, and you get to reap without you know repercussions. It's a good card. The chain seems fair, and at a common, this is very powerful. Psychic Network is next. It is an action card and it has the playability. Steal one amber for each friendly ready Mars creature. Um, when you just need to get that extra bit of amber, you know, um, you play this. Obviously, you have tons of Mars creatures out because you're a Mars deck. Uh, and yeah, you just cash it in to get a bunch of amber. Nice card. Sample Collection is next. It is an action. It has the playability. Put an enemy creature into your archives for each key. Your opponent has forged. If any of these creatures leave their archives, they are put in their owner's hand instead. 
This is a worse version of mass abduction, um, which makes sense because mass abduction is rare. This isn't uncommon. Um, this has like an upper limit of two creatures. Um, but again, take them, put them there, don't touch them. Good. Shatterstorm is next. It's an action. It has the playability. Lose all your amber. Ooh, dear. Then your opponent loses triple the amount of amber you lost this way. This card is only good when you have two amber, I'd say. Uh, and they're about to make a key. That's the only point it's good. Other than that, you're probably shooting yourself in the foot. And that are rare as well. There's... I don't like this as a rare. I think it should be an uncommon. Um... Yeah, I think I think there's only it's only good if you have two or three amber and they're about to make a key. Other than that, it's terrible. Next card is called Soft Landing. It is an action and it has the playability. The next creature or artifact you play this turn enters play ready. So this is quite thematic. You you know they drop down and they're ready. Um You want to play this when you can play something really massive or something really that will affect the board straight away. Um yeah, this is quite you know quite a simple card. It's just an enabler. It can be fairly useless um, in some situations where you know it, being ready won't really do anything. Um, but you know it's it's there. <laughs> it's very thematic. It's a common. Can't complain. Squawker is next. It is an action. It gives you one amber when you play it, and it has the playability ready a Mars creature or stun a non Mars creature. So, this is just a slightly better version of Soft Landing. Obviously, Soft Landing works with other houses and artifacts, whereas this only works with Mars creatures, but it allows you to stun a non Mars creature and it gives you an amber. So, I prefer this because it has a bit more flexibility. Mars cards, and it gives you the amber. So I prefer Squawker to Soft Landing, but I think they both have their place. The next card is called Total Recall. It is an action. It gives you one amber when you play it, and it has the playability. For each friendly ready creature, gain one amber. Return each friendly creature to your hand. So you play all your big things down, do a big combo, play Total Recall, get a bunch of amber, and get all your things back ready to do another combo the next turn. Um, yeah, good. When you want to keep your things safe, and they're too valuable and you don't want to lose them. Nice, you know, I like this card. Combat Pheromones is the first artifact. It ha gives you one amber when you play it, and it has the Omni ability. Sacrifice Combat Pheromones. You may use up to two other Mars cards this turn. So you play this on a turn when you're playing Mars, and then later on when you're using another house, you sacrifice it, and you get to play some Mars stuff. Um, very useful. Being able to access other houses is always useful. And this is good because it lets you use two Mars cards. Um, good. Compod is next. It is an artifact with some great art. Um, it has the action ability to reveal any number of Mars cards from your hand. For each card revealed this way, you may ready one Mars creature. This isn't that good, especially for a rare. Um, unless you have a, a way of getting a bunch more than, you know, a bunch more cards in your hand than, than standard, it doesn't seem that strong. Um, basically it feels like you can only get a maximum of two or three per turn um, ready uh, I don't know I imagine in play it's probably a lot better than I, th I, I can think right now but it depends on you having creatures on the field that you then want a ready and then you have to then show off the creatures in your hand which is then given your opponent mm, I don't know it depends how important the player but it, the um, creatures being ready is it doesn't seem you know I don't know. I feel like this is one of the ones you have to play to really see how powerful it is. Crystal Hive is next. It's an artifact. It has the action ability. For the remainder of the turn, gain one amber each time a creature reaps. So you're going to be reaping, you get an amber for that, and then you get another one. Nice. Yeah, I like this. This is good. An uncommon as well. Uh, very good. Custom Virus is next. It's an artifact. It gives you one amber when you play it, and it has the Omni ability. Sacrifice Custom Virus. Purge a creature from your hand. Destroy each creature that shares a trait with the Purge creature. There's a lot of caveats to this. Obviously, if you come up in a mirror match, you can get rid of a Mars creature and get rid of all of their Mars creatures. Um, if not, you can purge one of your creatures from another house. Say, get rid of a human, and then kill all of the humans on the other side. Um, 
there's a lot of times this could be a bad card it might not do anything uh, you could just purge one of your rubbish cards from your hand and then you know you've cleared it out from your deck and you've cleared the city deck you sort of thinned your deck um, and you get an ember for playing it so there's a little bit of you have to there's a little bit of setup to this um, but if played well it could be ridiculously strong uh, it could potentially wipe out everything they've got Feeding Pit is next. It is an artifact and it has the action ability discard a creature from your hand. If you do, gain one amber. Yeah, so as before with Custom Virus, use this to get rid of your terrible creatures that you don't really want to play um, and then get ember for it. It's uh, useful. Invasion Portal is next. It is an artifact. It has the action ability discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard a Mars creature or run out of cards. If you discard a Mars. <laughs> Excuse me, let me try that again. If you discard a Mars creature this way, put it into your hand. So when you want a what am I trying to say here? You you play this, you get rid of a bunch of cards from your deck, which is again useful because you sort of filtering through your deck. You get to another Mars creature, um, and then when you eventually do get to a Mars creature, you put it in your hand. Um, this is good. This basically this basically enables you to draw another Mars creature. If you only have a few Mars creatures left in your deck and you want to get to one to use with a combo, this is very useful. Incubation Chamber is next. It's an artifact. It has the Omni ability. Reveal a Mars creature from your hand. If you do, archive it. Simply put, save one for later. You know, put put one of your creatures in your in your hand in your hand into your archive, and then save it for a later turn. Then do big combos and win from there. I like this. Mother Gun is next, it is an artifact, it has the action ability, reveal any number of Mars cards from your hand, deal damage to a creature equal to the number of Mars cards revealed this way. This is fantastic, because you can do it every turn. Um, yeah, I like this, if you've got, you, you got to think, okay, probably getting two or three Mars cards per turn. Um, this is probably only like two or three damage a turn. But then if you use it in combination with things like incubation chamber or uh, total recall suddenly you might be able to do loads of damage with this um, quite regularly sniffer is next it is an artifact it gives you one amber when you play it and has the action ability for the remainder of the turn each creature loses elusive this is very strong against decks with elusive creatures um, in the previous reviews we looked at Brobnar and we've looked at Dis. both have uh, elusive creatures in the form of the imps and the goblins um, they tend to be quite fragile so they only have like two health to or three health um, and once you've played sniffer they just become two or three health creatures that are very easy to kill uh, this card is deceptively strong swap widget is next it's an artifact it has the action ability ready and it red return a ready friendly mars creature to your hand if you do put a mars creature with a different name from your hand into play then ready it. So simply put, you swap your little weak guy with your big powerful guy. Um, the fact that you can do this every turn, the fact that it's ready when it comes into the field is very strong. This is this is a very very good card, and it is it is worth being a rare. You'd be happy with this. Blibib is the first creature. It has two power, no armor, and it is a Martian scientist. It has the reap ability. The next Mars creature you play to this turn enters play ready so you play this first you then play another one and you you know you play your big mars creature like the one we'll see next and it comes down ready um other than that it's really fragile uh no you know no armor um yeah yeah this is okay it's an uncommon so it's not gonna be an all-star but it's okay chuff ape is next it is 11 power no armor beast creature it has taunt which is great and it has chuff ape enters battle enters play stunned and it has the fight and reap ability you may sacrifice another another friendly creature if you do fully heal chuff ape so this guy is really hard to get rid of unless they've got removal he'll keep your other stuff alive because he's got taunt yes he enters stun so he's sort of a turn behind but then when he does sort of come online, you can then keep him you know, healthy and alive with getting rid of your, your weaker, littler creatures. So you get rid of your blibib, um, you get rid of your, I don't know, your regular little aliens, and then 
boom, he's back to full health and wrecking shop. Very strong for a rare and very good. Ether Spider is next, is a seven power creature, has no armor, is a beast, and it has Ever Spider deals no damage when fighting. Each amber that would be added to your opponent's pool is captured by Ever Spider instead. So this is basically just a big sponge, it doesn't really do any damage, but it takes some. Um, and you know it, it, it irritates the opponent, it stops them gaining amber. Um, yeah, this is this is good. You know, take their things. Similarly to this next card, grab a jammer, four power creature, one armor. Um, yeah, first armor in the, in the deck. It is a robot. It has your opponent's keys cost plus one amber, and it has the fight and reap ability capture one amber. So, you know, makes it a little bit harder for them to win the game. Um, makes it a bit easier for you to win the game. It's a strong creature. I like this, and for a common, this is you know this is what you want from a common. It does quite a lot. Gromid is next, it is a 10 power creature, it has no armor, and it is a beast. It says you cannot play creatures. After an enemy creature is destroyed fighting Gromid, your opponent loses one. So you want to play your big creatures before you play this, or sorry, the rest of your creatures before you play this. Um, he shuts you down, which is bad, really. Um, you don't really want to shut yourself down and limit your options. But, you know, is he worth the trade-off? Maybe um, you got to think you're probably only going to get one or two amber from it, unless you have a way to heal it. Then, yeah, uh, it's it depends. You know what other options you've got. If you play this last after you've got a bunch of things out on the field, it's fine. If he's the only thing you've got on the field, then you're quite limited. Yeah, I don't know if I like it or not. It, it doesn't do quite enough for me. John Smith is next. It is a two power creature, Agent Martian with no armor. It has elusive, so the first time this creature is attacked each turn, no damage is dealt, and it has the fight and reap ability. Ready a non Agent Mars creature. Yeah, this is you know fairly useful. It it fits into the theme of readying other Mars creatures. Um, I don't know. This doesn't seem. Strong. I think you play it with things like Chuff Ape. Um, you know, you play John Smith, then you play Chuff Ape. Boom. Then you've got the Chuff Ape doing stuff straight away. Other than that, it's quite. Mm, actually, for common, you know, it, it lets your things come in play. It's got elusive. Actually, this is alright. Not sure about the name there. Mind Warper is next. It's a two power creature, no armor, Martian scientist with elusive. And have the action ability. Choose an enemy creature. It captures one amber from its own side. Um, nice and simple, really. Just makes it harder for them to craft the key. Makes it hard to um, kill this guy because he's got elusive. It's a right. It's not really going to do much else other than sort of annoy them. Um, and yeah, be a combo part in the rest of the Martian cards. Felix the Disintegrator is a one power creature with no armor. It is a Martian soldier, it has elusive, and it has the action ability. Your opponent loses one for each other friendly Mars creature. So this is one of your big payoff cards for having a bunch of Mars things out. Um, you know, the, it, it, your opponent only loses it, you don't gain it. But obviously if they're losing it, that puts them behind. So this is all right, very fragile. Um, obviously it's got elusive, which makes them a little bit tougher, but you, know, you can play this over and over and over again, or use the ability over and over again, um, which is pretty strong. Unless they've got a way to deal with it, they might, you know, they might not be able to craft a key for several turns. Quillix, the Plague Master, free power creature with no armor, is a Martian scientist and has the fight and reap ability. Deal free damage to each human creature. This damage cannot be prevented by armor. So if you come up against a deck with loads of humans in, this is ridiculously strong. If you're not, it doesn't do anything extra, and it's just a free power creature, simply put. So this is a human, uh, excuse me, a human hate card. Other than that, just a regular creature. Tunk is next. It's a six power creature robot with one armor, and it has after you play another Mars creature, fully heal Tunk. All right, yeah, this is strong. Um, it's very survivable. You play another creature every turn, stays really strong. Um, for a common, this is fantastic. This should be an uncommon, um, in my opinion. Yeah, this is this is really strong. 
Um, I really like this card. It's probably one of my favorite commons out of Mars. Very simple, but it works very well. It's going to survive a long time, and it's probably going to kill a bunch of things. Ulic Megamouth, I think. This is how you pronounce that. It's a free power creature. It's a Martian scientist. It's got no armor, and it's the fight and root ability. User friendly, non Mars creature. So obviously you've got free houses in your deck, as I mentioned several times. You might have a bunch of stuff from one of your other houses on the field. You might not be able to use it because you've announced Mars, and then suddenly you, you know, use this guy's ability, and you can use that big creature. Um, yeah, nice. Ulix. Oh Christ, <laughs> excuse me, um, Uxlix the Zookeeper uh, is a two power creature with no armor, Martian scientist, it has elusive and has the reap ability, put an enemy creature into your archives, if that creature leaves your archives it's put into its owner's hand instead, so like mass abduction you just take something, obviously this you can do every turn, um, yeah just take their stuff and put it in an archive, this is very strong, you can do it every turn. Uh, or whenever you reap, sorry. Um, it's got elusive, so it's hard to kill. And yeah, basically you just abduct their thing and you don't actually do anything with it, you just leave it there. Uh, and don't worry about it. Vezima, the think, or oh, Vezima Think Drone, is a free power creature. It has no armor, it is a Martian scientist, and it has the reap ability. You may archive a friendly creature or artifact from play. So, whereas a lot of the other abilities are about targeting an opponent's creatures or artifacts, um, this allows you to abduct your own. Um, very good if you want to you know, set up another combo later or keep something safe or maybe something's really you know damaged and it's going to die the next turn. Boof, you play this, reap this, and you get your thing back and you can play it again later and it's good. Um, maybe you've got... What's its name? Give me two seconds. Maybe you've got a Gromid on the field uh, and you can't play uh, creatures. Ooh, no but you have this already on the field, then you archive your Gromid, and then you play a bunch of creatures. Um, this is very combo-y, it lets you set up a lot of things. It's nice, it's quite versatile, I like it. Ixil Marauder is next, it's a two power creature, Martian soldier, and Ixil Marauder gets plus one power for each uh, amber on it, and it's the playability, capture one amber for each friendly ready Mars creature. So you have a bunch of Martians out, you play this guy, um, it hopefully survives, and then you reap with all your mouse stuff, and you know this guy potentially comes massive, um, and then his playability makes him big as well. Uh, yeah, for a common, this is really good. You basically play him when you got a field full of Martian stuff, and go from there. Really, very good. Ixilo Bolter is a free power creature, it is a Martian, a soldier with no armor, and has the fight and reap ability, deal 2 damage to each creature. If this damage destroys that creature, purge it. So... Oh, sorry, I said each creature, this is actually only a creature. Yeah, this... This kills something fragile, and it gets rid of it from the game forever. It's, you know, it's okay. It probably, you know, unless they've got a bunch of weak stuff out, it'll only be deal two damage, which isn't that strong. But if it does get a go off, then, you know, you can take out something really big. Um, a lot of very strong creatures have very low power, but really good effects. So this could deal with one of them. Um, other than that, you know, it's probably just going to be something that deals intermittent damage to the opponent. Um, Occasionally it might wipe them out, be really powerful, or wipe out one of their best things. Other than that, he's probably just going to just annoy, really. Ixil, or Ixlix, <laughs> Ixilix Dominator <laughs> is next, is a creature, has nine power, one armor, um, it is a robot, it has taunt, and Ixil Dominator enters play stunned. I've definitely butchered that name. So it's a common, but it's very powerful. Keeps your own things alive. Um, You'll notice that a lot of Martians have very low health, twos and threes. So you play this, it acts as a big buffer and keeps your other stuff alive. Um, so that's all it is really. It's quite strong. Once it comes online, it then you know can do some big damage as it can fight. Um, but until then, it's just a big you know. It just keeps your thing safe. It's a nice card. Common, yeah, that seems quite good. Zorg is next, that's the name I can pronounce. Zorg is next, it's seven power, it has no armor, it's a creature beast, it enters play stunned, and it has the before fight ability, 
for um, stun the creature Zorg. Sorry, stun, stun the creature Zorg fights and each of that creature's neighbors. So if they've got a fairly filled board, you, you fight. Um, it stuns, you know, up to three things. And yeah, this could really, you know, this is a good fighter. Uh, obviously, there's a setback turn where you got to wait for him to, you know, unstun. Um, but then once he's fighting or able to fight, he can stun three things a turn. Very strong. Zigzix the Many is a free power creature, no armor, Martian soldier, and it has the fight and reap ability. You may reveal a creature from your hand. If you do, archive it. And Zizix the Power. Excuse me. Zizix the Many gets three plus one power counters. So if you've got something in your hand that isn't going to be very useful, you just pitch it away. Um, it only goes to your archive, so it doesn't actually get discarded. You just save it for later. And then, you know, you buff this by three. You do this a couple of turns in a row. Suddenly this guy, you know, gets really out of hand, snowballs massively. Um, yeah, it's got, you know, it's the fight and reap ability. So you've got a bit of flexibility with it when you use it. Uh, good card. Biomatrix Backup isn't the first upgrade. It gives you one amber when you play it, and it has this creature gains destroyed. You may put this creature into its owner's archives. So you put this on your best thing. When it dies, you get it back. Um, you get an amber for playing it, so it's good. Yeah, simply put, you get, you know, double value out of your best creature. Very nice. Brainstem Antenna is next. It's an upgrade, and it has this creature gains after you play a Mars creature, ready this creature, and for the remainder of the turn, it belongs to the house Mars. So you put this on your big thing from another house, or your big, or your useful creature from another house, um, and then in later turns, when you're going to use Mars, this, you know, that creature then acts as a Mars card. Um, yeah, this gives you access to your other houses when you're using your Mars. This is nice. Jammer Pack is next. It's an upgrade. It gives you one amber when you play it, and it has this creature gains. Your opponent's keys cost plus two. Um, yeah, this this doesn't you know feel like it does much, but it just sets them back. It makes their keys cost at least eight. Um, gives you one amber when you play it. So yeah, it's not fun, or it's not necessarily that like, doesn't interfere with the board, but it does set them back. Obviously, if they're nearly about to craft the key, you know you put this on something, and suddenly they have to do more to craft the key. Um, yeah, this is alright. It It's a good card. It just probably won't feel that fun to play, I guess. I don't know. And lastly, Red Planet Raygun is an upgrade. It has... Um, it gives you one amber when you play it. And this creature gains Reap. Choose a creature. Deal one damage to each creature. To that creature for each Mars creature in play. Oh, sorry, my head melted then. Basically, it's a ray gun. You put it on the creature and... You know, you wait till you've got a bunch of Mars things out, which again, you're going to be doing a lot because it's Mars. You want loads of creatures out. Um, and then you just ping one of the things and vaporize it. Very flavoursome. Uh, Martians love their ray guns. Uh, if, you know, you're probably going to do it. It's going to do at least one damage a turn, probably, because you're probably going to put it on a Mars creature. Um, it, you know, best case scenario, it does plenty. Um, yeah, very thematic, very flavourful very fitting way to end the Mars cards. So that was Mars. Um, a lot of difficult names to pronounce. A lot of, you know, low health, low power creatures with effects that depend on having a bunch of other creatures, you know, in your hand or on the field. Um, I've noticed a lot of their actions give you amber when they play it. Quite well, a lot of their cards in general give you amber when they play them. Um, so that's probably a theme. Um, a lot of mass board damage. A lot of, well, my favourite Mars ability seems to be, you know, abducting your opponent's stuff. It's the most flavourful ability, I think, in the game. <laughs> just take their things. You know, you've seen in movies, you've seen what Martians do. They just take, your, uh, take the cow out of the field and they take it away. This is basically what you're doing, but with their best things. Um, yeah. I think they nailed Mars. I think they got the flavour right. Um, individually, they seem very fragile. But I think once you get going and you get a bunch of Mars things out, then there's a problem. Very susceptible to board wipes. Um, 
yeah, I'm just sort of going through quickly. Um, none of the rares really jumped out at me as being really strong. Um, in, you know, in particular, I think Shuff Ape seemed good. Sniffer seems good. Um, Total Recall seemed useful. Shatterstorm doesn't seem very good. Um, yeah, Mass Abduction is probably my favourite rare. Uh, I really like the symbol. Is it Thug? Uh, Tunk. Tunk is probably you know one of my favourite commons. It does quite a lot. Uh, Ixil Mar Marauder is quite powerful. Um, and Uxlix the Zookeeper is quite strong for an uncommon. Yeah, I like this. Biomatrix Backup. I like that card. Yeah, I like this little series of cards. Um, yeah, Mars seems good. <laughs> so that's Mars. Um, if you, you know, if you thought my opinions were good, let me know. If you thought they were terrible, let me know down below. Um, if you've got Mars, what have been your outstanding Mars cards? What combinations do you like to do the most? What combinations may I have sort of overlooked and not seen that actually really work really well? Um, yeah, let me know. Let other people know in the comments. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see the rest of the series or more reviews of other games coming out. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in part five, which will be the Sanctum for real this time. It'll definitely be Sanctum. I'm looking at it on the screen. <sighs> I'll see you then. Have a good day. Bye.